Well hello there, I'm Will, just Will, and today in this tutorial I'm going to go over how to use the microwave transmitter. This system is a notoriously finicky system, a very finite point you, uh, point you have to hit with it. So hopefully in this series I'll cover over some of the do's and don'ts, shall we say, with this, because I ran into a massive problem with this uh, on a stream, and I went over about four hours, pulled my hair out, and so forth. So let's jump into it. So the first thing you might be tempted to do, just like myself, was to just eyeball it. So you think, okay, I've got a receiver up there, got a transmit here, how hard can it be? Jetpack so you get your spanner out, start adjusting, oh, wrong way that way, let go up a little bit, and we spin it round. Luckily on this one, it's 90 degrees, straight in line, nice and easy. So you knock it up a little bit more, and you say, I don't know, Bit more. 130? Yeah, looks like right. On. You head up to the top here. You set the top one to the opposite, 270 degrees, nice and easy, as it is in a straight line. Then you knock this angle up, I don't know, 30 degrees. Let's see. Eyeball it again. Bit more. Yeah, why not? You think, oh yeah, that's good enough. You think, right, I'll turn it all on. That one's on. We've got a load. That's on even though it says off. And you get down to the bottom, you turn it on, you think, right, here we go. <gasps> Nothing happens. And you think, well, it's kind of lined up. So you start futzing it, maybe it's an extra one, maybe it's an extra two. And you sit there and you're fiddling. And then you think, hmm, this ain't right. What else could be doing? What else is wrong? What am I doing wrong? And you start pulling your hair out. So you then turn to the wiki. So here we are with the wiki. Let's search for it. Hmm, microwave. Microwave oven? No. Hmm, transmitter. No, doesn't come up. So let's just search for transmitter. Hmm, logic transmitters? No. So where is it? Where is it? Here it is, power transmitter. So we're getting somewhere. And you go on here and you think, oh yeah, here's all the information. Yep, unaffected by storms. Oh, great, great, great. How do you alignment? Uh, you start looking at this and you think, 20 a maths degree to work out how to align two basic things in a game. So you then think, okay, how do I do this? You start getting your calculator out. Hmm. Okay. So it's decimal places. How do I put that into a game? So at this point you've calculated your numbers, you've done everything you need to do, and you think, right, I've got my numbers, let's put them in. Hmm, uh, let's see, we well, want to output to the transmitter. I'm going to output, let's say, the horizontal start off with. Oh no wait, we don't need that, it's aligned up 90 degrees, so we don't need that one. It's the vertical, with its weird decimal places. So we say it's okay, it's 100 and, uh, let's see, oh, hmm, okay, can we do decimals? Oh, we can, let's go down to that, but wait, we need to go smaller, let's go get the label maker out next. So I've got my labeler, let me put in here the exact numbers, 1.33, I don't know, 813, something like that, confirm. We turn it on. Voila! We get the perfect angle. But we're only halfway there. We have to do the same up there. Then imagine if you do the horizontal as well. So that's four times you have to go and edit and calculate the numbers each time. This is not really what I'd call a practical solution. So this is where we get into MIPS and IC10 coding. At one point in the live stream on Twitch, I was pointed to this script, uh, which is on the sta uh, Stationeer's official Discord. It's by a user called Risu. Now, uh, I look through this, and as you can see, there's not really much in the way of documentation. It's just a dump, basically. So it took me a little while to work out what was going on. It does require you to have both of the transmitter and the receiver point in the exact same direction. Uh, on the power port. I believe it was the power ports had to be both pointing north from what I remember. Again, this is going back yesterday. 
can't remember exactly what. This isn't ideal because again, some people want certain powers going certain way. I know from my personal experience, I wanted power to come in at certain directions and things like that. So what I've done, I have taken this code and added some configuration options to it, which we'll now go over. So here's the expanded code I've added in. Basically, most of it is exactly the same, no real difference. All I've done though is added in some extra angle calculations. So you'll see up here in these areas that were all commented out, that's what these hashes are for. It allows you to put in anything you like after it and the, uh, the compiler, basically all the, the MIP software will ignore anything after that point. And I've added in here the transmitter power socket direction and the relative direction to the power receiver on the socket, basically on the receiver. We'll go over this in a little tutorial just to explain how you set up each one of these. So basically, if your transmitter is pointing south, you just take this one. And if, say the, if the receiver is pointing, shall we say 180 degrees, completely the opposite direction. So your power port, instead of pointing south, is pointing north. You just comment out or take out the comment on this one or the hash, I say. So now it becomes an active code. That's all we got to do. See where it says plus 180. So basically it's a completely 180 degree relative to that one. So I've now loaded up this demo, which is a showing all four scenarios that the transmitter can be in. The receivers are still in the exact same position uh, with the angle of the power socket pointing to the east. Yes, east, 90 degrees. So the first one, we'll use an example here. On. This one, the power socket is pointing uh, if I get my angles right, there we go, south, 180 degrees. So we go into our laptop, Jet and you can do this on, on the computer, doesn't matter which one it is really. Grab the chip, it's already got the code on there, it's correct, but I'll go through the process of setting it up. We edit it, and we say the power socket is pointing south on the transmitter, okay? And then we go over to this one, Pop my light off. You can see this one's over here. So we're saying, right, the transmitter is pointing south. And to get to the angle of the receiver, we rotate left 90 degrees. So we are taken away in the corner. You'll see the direction or the heading basically on the compass. We're going from 180 to 90. So we take away 90. So in the laptop, we choose the option on here that is minus 90 degrees. Confirm, export the code, grab it, pop it in, turn it on. And now, fingers crossed, they will now point to each other. There is one little thing that will go over as well, how they are getting data. As you see now, we have power. Perfect alignment, just like that. So how do we get this to work? We'll break down the steps now. I'll start with the second one in the line. So we have here, logic transmitter. It is set to passive at the moment. It says set active, so you know it's in the passive mode. The receiver has got a data transmitter built in. Now I didn't realize this. So you can actually just set this to the receiver. So on these units. So what it will do is take the information in its configuration, which is X, Y, and Z location, or X, Y, and Z, and it will then pop it into this chip. On the code, we have two variables that we read, D0, which is from, which is our transmitter, D1, 2, which is the receiver. So on here, we set these little screw terminals. Just grab that. And we say D0, power transmitter, D1, logic transmitter, okay? D0 is where we're getting sending the power from. D1 is where it's coming, or where we're receiving the power, shall I say. 
So and that's getting that information through the transmitter, the logic transmitter, which again is a logic receiver in the situation. It's a bit confusing with transmitters and receivers, but basically think of the logic transmitter as just a receiver for the information from the receiver on that end. Almost like a little wire has been created between these two, just wirelessly. So this one's already been pre-programmed. So pop it on, different angles again. Another thing that caught me out, and I'll show it quickly. If you don't have a load, you'll see that the switches don't glow. Now I spent a good half an hour at the end on. of one of my streams, banging my head against a brick wall with this, because even though they're perfectly aligned, because there's no load, these lights don't come on. So that is something you must bear in mind that you must have a load for it to activate. As soon as I pop a load on, you'll see the lights on the switches come to life to say that there's power, and you'll also see the faint glow from the microwave beam. I'll go through setting up the third one in the chain just one more time so you understand exactly the slight variations again of how the calculations are done. So on this one, the power socket on the transmitter is pointing to the north, zero degrees. So we go into the code and we can simply just comment out this line as we don't need it. We go down to line three, north, zero degrees. And on this one, we are going from north, zero degrees, right round to 90 degrees. So we are adding 90, or should we say a, the code is adding 90. So if we go on to the edit, and we say we want to do plus 90 at the bottom here, or line three. Confirm that, grab that, export, pop the code in, turn it on, and away they go. As you can see, doesn't matter. We'll go into a more real world example with my stream series world and show you on a slightly odd angles and everything, but it still works just fine using the same set of process we're going through here. So we now pop back into the real world example. Uh, the power port on this one, we'll have a look see, is pointing to the west, 270. So we go into the code. Uh, sorry, wrong button, uh, edit. So west, 270. Let's go on. check the top one. And this one is also pointing to the west, 270. So we go into the editor and we pop that in at zero degree change, as it is uh, the same as the other one. Ignore the um, 180 here, that's all part of the calculations that are required further on. The main thing you're concentrating on is this hash value here. That's what you're changing, or that's the angle difference, not this number here, basically. It's the last number you care about. Same up here. It's always the last one. Ignore everything before the hash. That's all programming nonsense. You don't need to worry about it. So we export the code out. Pop it in the IC. Turn it on. And voila. They start moving into position. Let me make sure that one's turned on. Top one hopefully is turned on as well. And there we go. A little warning blinking light is going. And we have link. Well, hopefully you found this tutorial fairly useful. There's a link in the description for the workshop page where you can then download it and edit it at your heart's content. Anyway, I'll catch you all later. Bye for now.